Hi, I'm Scott Noonan, CEO of Audio Advice. Today's video, we're gonna show you the building of a home theater in an unfinished attic space, all the way from walking the room with the customer in the pre-wire, all the way to the finished product. This particular job has got all sorts of challenges from odd roof lines, asymmetrical shape, everything you can imagine, but a bunch of great craftsmen on it, and a lot of cool things that you'll see about audio video. We ended up with a 7.2.2 system, Think you're gonna enjoy it? Now let's get started. One of the big challenges in this room is it's not a traditional bonus room that goes straight back. So you've got a really fascinating challenge here where you've got a diagonal coming down here, a diagonal coming up there, where to have the size screen that the customer wanted, which is as big as you could do in this room, the projector's gotta be far enough back to be able to have a really good throw on it. And so you'll see we've come right here, we've brought a chase You'll see the orange pipe coming uh, all the way from up front. And there's a bunch of calculations and I'll spare you the details, but essentially what you're calculating is, let's move as close as we can to get full size on the screen. Because we're offset, we've got to use a little bit of lens shift and you want to use just enough lens shift to be able to get a great picture without getting keystoning and all of that. And it turns out we can get a good 12 inches of lens shift, which means we can move the projector a little bit to the right that allows us to move it higher. But in any case, once you do all the mathematics of your throw distance, how far you can offset this way, and actually th there's some offset as you, as you move your way down from the top of the screen, you actually get a little bit more shift that you can do. So anyways, uh, the chase is right here. That gives us full flexibility uh, to put the projector right there, which can be terrific. Okay, so you can see right here where our rack's gonna sit. Uh, we've got all the wires coming in, coming in, getting ready for the sheet rockers who will come in here. And you'll notice we've got this really advanced, basically black trash bag covering up the end of it. There's multiple ways to do this, but for right now, before anyone comes in so you don't get sheet rock on it or all sorts of other stuff that's about to happen, in the temporary, as soon as you pull the wires, just put a bag over them, get it covered up so everything's clean and ready. And so if you've watched some of our other videos online where we've done home theaters, one of the things you know is you constantly run into things that you don't expect. And so you'll see here, prior to us coming in the home, someone had already run, uh, these are basically uh, security cables in the telephone line. And you can see whoever did it, uh, did a terrible job. And so these lines actually need to go back up in the ceiling. Um, I think there's a fun thing to point out for those of you that are either getting into the business or you're a do-it-yourselfer and you, you, know, you run in a situation like this. There's a handful of ways you can solve it. But um, if you think, one thing that might come to mind is you go, oh, well, I'll just cut it here and I'll put some extension in or whatever else. And the problem with that is you can't get then to where you cut it. So the real way to do this is actually to come down here all the way to the entrance. Uh, cut the cables there. That will allow us to pull the cables back up, get them correctly placed um, into the roof. And then we can put a junction box down here so that you can always access where they were spliced. And so that's the, the proper way to do it. And I expect that'll be the game plan uh, right here. Okay, so you saw in the pre-wire that this particular attic has got all sorts of roof angles all around it. So one of the greatest challenges was figuring out, one, how do we make it aesthetically beautiful? Two, how do we make it totally functional? So you've got a big screen, you've got great sound no matter what seat you're in. So first, let's just take a look at the room itself. Okay, so first let's focus on the video itself. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about this screen. So you'll see we've got a pretty big screen in here, particularly given that the angles of the 
room itself sort of shrink and narrow as you go to the back of the room. So this is a 152 inch diagonal screen. It's actually a woven screen that's transparent so that the speakers, the left, center, and right are actually directly behind it. And I'm gonna show you later, we're actually gonna go back behind the screen itself so you can see how we wired it, what it looks like behind the screen. Obviously, because we've got a room with all these angles and the projector itself has to be offset from the screen because of the, the roof line sitting here, we had to do some really neat stuff in terms of design. But in particular, we went with the Sony 715 projector. Why? It's got 1800 lumens, so it's got plenty of light for this room itself, but also it's got unbelievable processing with the X1 engine itself. One of the things that the customer really made a big point about is that they wanted great video. So as I mentioned, we've got an acoustically transparent screen with the audio playing out, and we really wanted to pop the video itself. And this Sony does a great job with motion flow. It has almost zero lag if you want to play gaming on it, and you know all those types of things in terms of actual processing itself. And I'm gonna go into it and show you a few tips and tricks. If you've seen some of the other videos that I've done before, you know we do a lot in terms of trying to make sure that the picture itself is calibrated well afterwards. If Audio Advice does it, or if you're a do-it-yourselfer that's buying from us and we're shipping to you, we actually ship you the tips and tricks. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to set up this projector correctly in a minute. Okay, so let's talk just for a second about how the projector is mounted here. A lot of people, when they think about building out their room or an attic or something else, they're scared to death when they think about a projector actually being on an angled roof line. And in this case, you'll see one, the craftsmanship is really quite impressive, both in the woodwork that was done here, but also in the mounting of the projector. Everything else is black, so you'll see the wires are covered in black, etc. But look at the mount itself, and you'll see it's an angled mount. We took it all the way exactly up into the apex where the roof line goes from diagonal up until horizontal and we've maximized the height we could do in the position we could to give ourselves sight lines everywhere and still get the right picture. Okay, so I'm actually in here playing with a video calibration myself and I'm gonna do some adjustments in it, but I wanna call out two quick things. One of which is most people, when they go calibrate projectors, uh, they think the sharpness needs to be really, really high. And you'll see, you know, actually it tends to be better when it's lower than you would think. So you'll see I've got this at 38 right now. It's gonna end up somewhere between 30 and 40 in this room. But again, a lot of people are thinking, I wanna take the sharpness up to 60 or 70 or whatever else. But as you get it too high, you're gonna to start to see ringing around all the sort of different, um, uh, lighting and different colors and everything throughout the screen itself. So you need to be careful about doing that. Again, uh, for those of you who are getting it from Audio Advice, we're setting all this up for you. If you buy it from us, we actually send you the tips and tricks on how to set all these settings as you go through. The one other thing I want to show you just really quickly, and I did this in a recent video, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, is to make sure whenever you set up a projector to go in and do the panel alignment. The panels will never be fully aligned perfectly when you get them. So you go down to here, uh, click adjust, and it will allow me to adjust the red, green, and blue panels so that they're perfectly aligned and your picture is as perfect as you can get. Now, in our case, the technicians have already done this before I got here, so I don't need to mess with it, but make sure you do that as well as look through all these other settings to get the best picture you can possibly get. Okay, so now let's talk about the surrounds, the Atmos, and the rear speakers. So in a room like this where you've got all these angles, and you've got the seats, and you don't actually have a clear back, there's no natural place to put rear speakers, you have to get creative. And there were two ways to do this. And I'm gonna walk you through sort of the concepts and then how, how we did it. So what we actually got set up here is seven channels around. So we've got the three in the front, we've got the side speakers here, and we actually have rears that are about halfway down on the angled roof line so that they are lower than the Atmos because you've got to get a height differential and are essentially angled in playing as the rears themselves. Then that leaves us with the Atmos just above the main seating position. If you're trying to figure out how to design your own theater, jump over to audioadvice.com, go to our home theater page, and you'll see we've actually got a full interactive tool. You put in the dimensions of your room and tell it how many speakers you want, and it will actually interactively tell you where every single speaker should go and help you design and build your theater. So what this turns out to be is a seven, 
dot two, because there's two subs, and then you'd have a two for the two Atmos itself. So 7.2.2. .2 .2. Well, one of the things I want to call your attention to, these are BMW 7.5s, but notice that they're custom painted. And we actually have a way, if you're trying to figure out how to do this on your own, give us a call, we can sort of walk you through it. But basically what we do is we take the white speaker grills, we thin out the paint that's totally matched up, we spray the paint like you were spraying or doing a, a nice guitar or something else. And then actually we use a little bit of air blower to blow through it. Our system designer who actually designed this system did an unbelievable job and actually decided to do it himself on it. And, but the end result is you make sure that none of the holes in the grill itself are actually stuck with paint. And it just looks and sounds incredible. So one of the things I wanna show you here is how we did the actual grill cloth. And again, in a minute, we're gonna go back behind the screen itself and see where the speakers are. But there's a subwoofer here and a subwoofer over there. So what we did was we actually took black speaker grill cloth and there's a specific kind of uh, grill cloth you wanna use when you do this to make sure it's acoustically transparent. And we actually painted it to match the exact same paint as the woodwork itself. And you'll see it just looks gorgeous, but again, has full playthrough in all of the paint we did. It's matte colored. And you, if you go and look at the seven mistakes we talk about people making in theaters, one of them is they use a gloss color or something like that right under a screen or somewhere else or reflective paint everywhere. We use matte paint throughout to make sure we didn't pick up those reflections in the theater. Okay, so let's switch gears for a second and talk about the lighting in the room. And there's actually an entire video I did on this that talks about all the different lights that you would do, how to set them up correctly in a theater room. But let's just walk through this room itself. So first, you've got the sconces on the side. These are primarily for decorative reasons. And as you might imagine, when it's in movie mode, these come down. The next thing you'll see is what's considered task lighting. And so you'll see these um, canned lights. These are actually DMF lights, which Audiofice itself sells. They're high-end LEDs with a high CRI, which stands for Color Rendering Index, meaning they hold their color extremely well and can dim down really, really well. Getting dimming capabilities, you might imagine, is critical in a room like this because we want to be able to dim down and not have a lot of light reflecting on the screen. So if you come around here, you'll see we've got this front row of canned DMFs. We've got a middle row. And by the way, in this particular house, um, we actually have each of these on different circuits. There's literally 13 different lighting circuits in this room, which is way overkill. For those of you doing it yourself, you won't do that many. But whatever you do, make sure that your front lights are all on their own circuit so you can turn those off when you're watching a movie. The worst thing is having lights on everywhere or having to turn them all off. In this case, the customer can take their remote control and hit lighting scenes between movie scene, daytime scene, all sorts of scenes, and change all the lights in the room, maintain the aesthetic, but bring the lights up and down based upon what scene they want. So we've got these metal ones. You can also see um, for each of these beams, there's actually white LED indirect lighting that's reflecting off. And so what that allows is one, there's a beautiful aesthetic all around these beams themselves. But the other thing that happens is it provides indirect lighting in the room without shining on the screen itself. And you'll see also in terms of these shelves, we have indirect LED lighting that's lighting these shelves up. Again, totally controllable on this side and in that side in terms of bringing up and down depending on the scene in the room. So let's jump over and take a look at the shade itself. Okay, so we actually have an electronic shade in the back of the room itself. I'll just open it up to give you a sense. Uh, this is a Lutron electronic shade, so it's perfectly quiet. But what you'll see is when it's time to have a Super Bowl or have a bunch of people over for Grammys or something like that, where you don't need it totally dark, you'll want the shade open. And when you wanna really sit down and ingrain yourself in a movie, the shade comes down in the movie scene. Okay, so one of the things I wanna show you now is how the system is controlled. The lights are turned on and off and all that. So I'm gonna start with this 
switch here. And again, all of the electrical outlets as well as the light switches are done in black. And it really looks beautiful in this room. Eventually, these will have engravings, which is the last thing we're gonna come do. But the top button itself turns on the room and brings on all the lights so that you know, you're just coming in. The next button down actually raises and lowers the shade in the back of the room. And now the next button actually puts it into movie mode. So it brings down all the lights and gets the ambient lighting that's coming, for instance, in the LED strips that's not reflecting on the screen, but provides enough light in the room. And then the lighting uh, on the floor so that you got safety lighting, but puts it into that movie mode. And then the final button turns it off. Now, what's really cool, you can do all that here, but we also set up a switch at the bottom of the stairs before you come into the attic. When you hit the button, you can choose one of two of them to hit. One of them just turns on the lights coming up into this room, but the other one actually turns on the lights of the stairway coming into the room, plus sets the entire room up so that by the time you get up here, all the lights are ready for you. And you can turn off the lights, obviously, when you leave and turn everything off as you're exiting. All right, so one of the key things in a theater of this quality is having one universal remote control. So you'll see I've got the Control 4 remote right here. If I hit watch, the customer can go to Apple TV, Uverse, Blu-ray game, or even change settings on the MRX. Uh, if you hit list, they can go straight to lighting, and you'll see within lighting, uh, they have the ability to control lighting scenes themselves. And so you'll see theater on, theater off, all sorts of things they can do in the lighting itself. And they can go through and literally, if they wanted to, change the front can lights, the stairs, cons lights, every single lighting load. And they can only turn it on and off, but they can dim it to any level they want. And then for simplicity, you'll see there are three custom buttons that we've set up here right at the top, one, two, and three. And those buttons allow them to toggle between hitting one, where it's 16 by nine for watching regular television or sports, hit two, that takes you to a, 2.4 movie for watching traditional movies, or even three, which is a Netflix mode that has something sort of in between a 16 by nine and a 2.4. The point is with a couple of simple touches or even just room off, everything works in the background from setting up the system, turning on the projector, setting the lights correctly, uh, adjusting all the audio from just one or two button clicks. And it makes it super simple, particularly when all of the equipment is in a completely hidden space behind the screen. Okay, now let's go actually behind the screen and see what the wiring looks like and the whole setup actually behind the transparent screen itself. So come on. So we're gonna look straight down the hallway here. Literally, what you're gonna see is the screen is on this wall. And so you can see the roof of the house is coming down here. I want you to see how cleanly all the wiring exists, the boxing for the speakers themselves. These are the CT 7.3s. There's the right, center, and left. And then we've got the full subwoofers, one here and one here that you saw when we were setting up for the pre-wire. So let's look at the rack itself. We've got the control for processors controlling all the lights, uh, the remote control itself, the shade, everything else. We've got the network switch in here, the Apple TV. We've got a slot in here for the Xbox or uh, PlayStation. And then down here is the Anthem 1120, which allows us to power everything. And then you've got good clean surge protection bringing it all in. Okay, so one of the things when we go into theaters that maybe someone's friend has done or they did on their own and they're saying, hey, can you help improve it? One of the biggest things we find is that it's just not calibrated right, either the video or the audio. One of the reasons that we were so focused on using the Anthem 1120 in this system is because it comes with Arc Genesis, which is one of the best calibration systems around. And as you can see, all the angles and craziness going on in this room, it was critically important to get it calibrated correctly from an audio perspective. Now, we had a really, really good situation here because of the angles and the asymmetry in the room itself, it actually was acoustically uh, quite impressive out of the gate. We've got really plush seats, really plush carpet, everything that we needed so we didn't have like amazingly high modes and notes and all sorts of stuff messing it up. However, the calibration itself did an unbelievable job really making all of these seats sound good in here. 
For those of you who are you know, working with Audiobytes, you know we come do all this for you, but if you happen to be buying from us as a do-it-yourselfer and you're doing it somewhere else in the country, know that we do send out the full setup guides on Anthem and most of the receivers, as well as on how to do arc genesis and calibrations, both from an audio perspective and from a video perspective to everyone buying these receivers and projectors from us. If you're considering building a theater or upgrading your own, go to audioadvice.com where you'll find buyer's guides, an inspiration gallery, videos of home theater installs, and our famous home theater design tool where you can put your dimensions and design the room. And it actually goes through all the acoustics, figures out where all your speakers should be. I hope you've enjoyed watching this theater video today. If you've got any questions about this theater or anything related to theaters or you want to see more, give us a call at audioadvice.com or stop by one of our showrooms and we've got lots of buyer's guides and videos on other theaters like this. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And another big thank you to all the craftsmen and to the homeowner for working so hard on this great theater. Thanks for watching.